love Cindy Kim news because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like too to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so, Sherry hey, and Kim. Welcome how y'all doing? Da, 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 da. And welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Kim Whitley. And I am Sherry Shepard. Mm. And we got a lot to unpack today. <laughs> we do? <laughs> we do? <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Because yes. I, I was thinking this one might be a short one because we didn't do our homework today. Well, we had a lot of stuff happening this week and I was like, write it down, remember? <gasps> oh my gosh, and I did. Right, and where is it? It's at the house. There it is. So we're going to talk about that on the next podcast. That's what I'm talking about. It makes no sense. Why can't you put it in your phone? This, Joshua, this we're doing the podcast. The pod. <laughs> okay, come we're doing the people one, in. One podcast. So Joshua is doing Legos. Legos. We're making, a, this is not Legos. This oh, is sorry. actually real construction pieces. And, and, and you're making it. Good job. You're in your gut, mommy. Okay, fantastic. That's very intricate. And so you guys are being loud, so oh, oh, mostly wow. it's my mom and Cherry. Nobody said say you guys are being loud the it's most. Not fighting over some aftercare and sugar. Oh, so he goes. You guys are being loud, but mostly it's my mom and Sherry. <laughs> but I said, who else? Like, are there other ghosts in I here? I told you about the ghost in my house. I know you. This is mm-hmm. the most haunted house yeah. ever. But it's it's all good. So even to start this off, it's so funny because we, uh, Kim is a little bit irritable because I'm changing the date that we shoot, the date that we shoot the podcast. Normally we shoot it on Saturday morning or Sunday morning Mm -hmm. when we're both energetic and we have energy. I'm changing it to Thursday night or Friday night. So we have a little less energy and we're both irritable and tired. Kim's a lot more irritable than me. She's been complaining for about the last hour. I think so. I fed her some chicken, which always seems to do the trick. It did. And I ate some chicken. Happier. Hey, Chris. Oh hey, what's Chris. up, Sherry? You know, this is a the, this is the hard thing about doing a podcast on Thursday or Friday night because Joshua probably will be uh, coming through every 30, 45 seconds. <laughs> yes. Are we in so, peak Joshua energy time? Yo, know, if we could have Josh, you know, if we could have Joshua's energy, do you understand how much the mm. world would change? Yeah, well, we'd be, yeah, you'd do five you know. podcasts a week. Oh, we be, could do five podcasts in a day yeah, we if we had the energy of Joshua, yeah. of a 10 year old. So, uh, but it was so funny because before we started, Kim wanted me to taste this flavored water. Now, I don't look, my boobies are. They're tripping. Um, I've been looking at them all night and tired of it. I know, but they're not. They're not. <laughs> this is why we're losing fans. This is why. <laughs> Who said we're losing? We're not fans? focused. We're talking about everything. That's why we cannot do the podcast on a weeknight. Yes, we can. We can. It's just the first day. No, Saturday we know. Boom, we're focused. We jump in there. We do our job. Thursday night, we've been working all day on fifty thousand different shows. We got kids, and it's every. We're all over the place. We can do this. It's just the first. This is the first time that we're doing it on now. So I want to apologize to our listeners and our viewers um, for this ridiculous night. Um, so anyway, Kim oh, was saying to me, and she's disrespectful. <laughs> You're not making any sense. I am so, making sense. Let me dip my cookie in this drink. So <laughs> Kim wanted me to taste this flavored water that she just is in love with. And I said, no, Kim, because you know I don't do sugar and I don't do, the only artificial sugar I do is monk fruit and xylitol, uh, maybe some stevia, because that's natural sugar. And she kept saying, no, 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 this water doesn't have any sugar in it's flavor. It's from Walmart. Anything you get from water, uh, Walmart, and it's supposed to be healthy, red flag. So uh, she says, no, 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 it doesn't have any sugar in there. It doesn't have, and I said, Kim, if it tastes sweet, there's some sugar. No, 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 no. So she makes she makes me um, this big old cup. You, when people say I want you to taste, they usually do a little cup. But she makes me this big old cup with the water, and I taste it, and it's way too sweet. And I say, Kim, it has to have sugar in there. It doesn't have sugar. She's going off. It don't have sugar. It don't have sugar. When I read, and this is why, ladies and gentlemen, when you read uh, the back of the label, let me see if I can get mm-hmm. it. When you read the back of the label. You must read that small print 
bring it back over to me. You've got to read the small print because the small print will tell you. Up here it says zero sugar, but the small print will tell you after all of the potassium, um, because it says total carb zero, total sugar zero, added sugars zero. Total fat, zero. Protein, zero. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're reading. But if you read the little print. Maybe I don't have my glasses that day. Because I'm borrowing them right now. Go so, home with them again and see what happens. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it says here, after the potassium benzoate, uh, it says aspartame. You know what aspartame is? Chris, can you do me one favor? It ain't favor? sugar. Yes, it is. It's, it's not art- sugar. It's an artificial sweetener. Exactly. So it's not sugar. Yes. You said sugar. It is. It's an artificial. Listeners and viewers, please put in the comments if you feel like it is sugar or is it artificial sugar. I just said it's artificial sugar. And it has so it ain't sugar. And it, it, it rots your brain. Chris, yep. can you just Google for me the negative side effects of aspartame? Because I'm telling Kim that it's horrible for you. I used to drink diet soda like uh, I was addicted to it right before I did Dancing with the Stars, maybe in 2012, I think. Okay, are you you not gonna listen? I'm and listening. I and I had to I'm, wean my. I used to like gargle and brush my teeth with Diet Pepsi. That's how addicted I was to diet soda and these things right here, these flavored waters. And uh, I had to wean myself off because I knew I could not do Dancing with the Stars subsisting off diet soda. I had to do water. It took me three and a half weeks. I got blinding, stabbing pains behind my eyes. Um, it, I had headaches. I was irritable because I was weaning myself off the aspartame. Three and a half weeks later, I thought I was going to have to go to emergency. Three and a half weeks later, I was done. I haven't done no, aspartame. No, that was the cocaine. Mm-hmm. You didn't tell That was the cocaine and the crack probably with the water. You try to tell people it was just the water. You so sweet. I weaned myself off of aspartame after three and a half weeks, and I immediately felt better. I just thought that was fun. I used to have dark circles <laughs> in my eyes that went away. I, then I looked up the side effects from aspartame, and they're horrible, Kim. I want Chris to. But well, every now and then, it's not. It's not. This like I is drink not every day. now and then. This oh, is I don't drink that gone. every day. Oh, who's been drinking it? I I just opened it. I'm drinking the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. This I'm gonna thing. drink the Chris, whole thing tonight. Chris, what does aspartame do to your brain? Uh, I'm not seeing anything about brain. So it's. Thank you, Chris. It's, it says if and you're. The next <laughs> and we're moving on. Dr. Matt got us this. We could do black business right here. Okay. You got it right here. There we here go. we go. For those with uh, obesity, however, regular consumption of low calorie sweeteners may increase the risk of metabolic diseases, including type 2 diabetes. That's from Medical News Today. I don't love that source. Um, Anti-aspartame activists claim there's a link between aspartame and a multitude of ailments, including cancer, seizures, headaches, depression, ADD, ADHD, dizziness, weight gain, birth effects. ADD? ADHD? Okay. Look up aspartame and brain rot. <laughs> Is that What's a technical term? I'm going to walk off the podcast. That's what I'm about to because do. Because it, it does. It rots your brain. I'm just saying. I need some flaws. Here we go. Here's Harvard. Could artificial sweeteners be bad for your brain? This is from the Harvard uh, EDU. Uh, can be bad? For, of course, there's more to the story. Uh, compared with people who said they didn't consume diet drinks, those who had at least one per day suffered three times more strokes and were three times more likely to develop dementia. Consumption of regular non-diet soda drinks was not linked to a higher risk of these brain problems, and the results were unchanged when accounting for other important factors such as gender, diet, smoking, physical activity. And there's way more to the story with about six paragraphs of uh, of issues, but this man from Harvard... Well, basically, the article is saying aspartame said don't, cut rots the, brain. don't cut off the white man. Aspartame ca- causes you That's to have That's not stroke, what he said. What did diabetes, he say? Okay, see. Seizures, ADD... A D H D H D H L M K O G. <laughs> All of that stuff, Kim. It causes your lipstick to fall <sighs> off your chap. Your eyelashes don't stick on right. Aspartame. No, oh, you that. didn't get your answer, so now you're just gonna keep talking. No, I got the answer. You we did, Chris. Chris, what do you think? Did she get the answer? Uh it Harvard says he's not sure exactly, but it does make him pause. <laughs> To uh, to to, to reevaluate. 
I'm pausing. And I spit right on the corner of my lip. I did spit over there. You guys get I your tests? Do you get your rapid got, test today? I, I, I licked it up. It's okay. That's fine. Did it have friends. a crumb in it? No. Exactly. <laughs> We've been friends for so long. I've tasted your spit. Mm. So that's all I wanted to say, you guys. When you when you read something, just because it says no sugar, no something, you got to read the little print. You got to read the, you know. Yeah, with the alls and the this and the xanthum this and that. I I, I hear you, Sherry. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it has the hidden stuff, the in the added sugar stuff. You just got to look. I mean, despite the fact that you drink aspartame so much and it is rotting your brain as we speak and giving you ADHD, <laughs> it's making it worse. You look amazing, Kim. Oh well, thank you. I feel like you look amazing too. You look like a whole new person. You done lost a little weight. You done lost so much weight, your hair texture changed and it grew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I have to say, uh, yeah. You look younger and you look like, you know, you're giving me those uh, young girls. Like, I put the braids in, I look younger. You put some Indian, what? I don't even think it's Indian. Shamamama, whatever kind of hair. <laughs> Whatever that is, with style, and you look like the Tatiana Ali from back in the day. Uh, you I'm know, it's so funny because everybody says it looks like, uh, uh, oh, is it Titania? No, it's uh, Titania, really? Tata no, it's you've been having aspartame because you got you know, Tatiana, Tatiana Ali. No, 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 you know who people will say I look like, uh, Cosby's daughter. That wasn't Titania Ali. It, it's oh, uh, oh, oh, you mean, um. What? Lisa Bonet? No, the, oh. the other one. She was the oh. little one. She was Rudy. Oh, Rudy. That's what I was trying to say. Her who, too. Who was Rudy? It's Tatiana Ali and what's wrong Keisha with Keisha Knight Pulliam. You know what? This is what who happens. Who is it, Chris? You... Keisha Knight Pulliam. Keisha Knight Pulliam. Pulliam. People always say, this is what happens when you get to the age that Kim and I are. No, no. Don't Your put entire... me in no, no. Aspartame is done me. It ain't got nothing to do with age, obviously. I done roasted my brain, y'all, because I done drank a little flavored water. Excuse me. Oh, I can't think uh, right now. Her <laughs> name is uh, Keisha uh, 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 Tatiana. Uh. So I would take it on myself. When you get to my age, your whole memory becomes a game show. <laughs> it's like a game of Jeopardy. You can't remember phrases. You can't remember words. You were going, what's uh, uh, her name? Uh, yeah. You know him. Uh, th that boy. It's amazing. But uh, who did we just say Rudy was a... Uh, uh, Keisha Knight Raven Pullman. Simone. Oh, Keisha Knight Pullman. 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 Huh? Pullman. Yeah, so I said... Oh, I thought it was Pullman. No, it's Pullman. How you spell Keisha, it? P-U-L-L-I-A-M. Correct. Oh, Keisha Knight Pullman. People say that Keisha Knight and I look yes. like sisters. They've yes. always... Um, I look like her aunt, actually, not sisters or her older no, sister. No, you look 20 years younger right now. You know, it's so funny. Whatever you did, keep doing him. I mean, <laughs> keep doing it. You know what it is? It's, I think weight loss, sometimes we're so used to being chubby, you and I, and our faces, we're so used to our faces being fat. Yeah. And we have many, many pictures of us when we were huge, huge and overweight. We had round heads, we had faces, <laughs> we complete had round circles. Was so round. But I don't do this. Kim does this. Now, Kim has lost 30 pounds with Weight Watchers, which she looks absolutely amazing. Like her Delta Stigma Seda uh, sorority sweater is so huge on her. When it was given to her, she was bigger and it looks so huge on her. And so, so if you want Thank to you find so out how to lose weight like Kim, it's been 30 pounds in a period of five years. She's lost the weight. <laughs> really? <laughs> five pounds. I thought, I thought you were going to hit her with the... Uh... Six pounds per year. Okay. This is, this is the problem. Oh, no, don't listen to her. That's all you. Yeah, don't be trying to put your hair up now. Oh, <laughs> so you better okay. be careful, but come on. Uh, listen. So she's lost 30 pounds in six months. Right. And I've been maintaining it, but and I got to lose more. It. And you you really don't need to lose more. You just need no, to work out and more. tone it up. You know what was exciting You're addicted today? addicted to the weight loss. What? Well, I, I need to be. I need to be addicted to something. <laughs> Guess what I put? What size pants I put on? What size? 12. Oh, Even though wow. people say I'm still in double digits, but I'm a 12. And I ain't been Because you used to be like a 22. 22. <laughs> I was in double digits there, too. See? 
<laughs> no, but I was close. I got some twenty twos upstairs. Don't be confused. No, that's such a big. I was in the 18, 16, 18. I have some 18s. You've gone down six to eight. Uh, I'm in a, hand I'm sizes. A, I'm in a twelve. That's today, awesome. And I was very excited about it. So I'd like to go down a little further, so it could be a loose twelve. So it'll be a loose twelve. Now you just fit and skin tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing, uh, Kim. If you want to find out her weight loss journey, mm -hmm. you can go to uh, WW, which is formerly known as Weight Watchers, yes. because Kim has lost weight on Weight Watchers. My weight loss has been through HealthyWage.com, and it's not so much Healthy Wage has uh, made me lose the weight, but I partnered with them because at Healthy Wage, you can if if you want to learn about it, it's HealthyWage.com. Slash Sherry, and you bet on yourself, and you can win money. There's an incentive mm -hmm. to lose weight because you win money. So if you reach your weight loss goal, you can win some money. And, and you can do any program you want. You to. can do any program you want through Healthy Wage. Mm -hmm. They want you. You have to commit to six months because here's why we love six months. You can't do a fad diet in six no. months. Six months is a lifestyle change. Six months is making a habit because it takes 30 days to create a habit. So with Kim, she's got habits that she's created. With me, with uh, Healthy Wage, I'm creating habits, but you can do Weight Watchers and, and bet on yourself with Healthy, Healthy Wage. Wage yeah. They, you know, they're saying, do whatever diet or weight loss program you want. Healthy Wage is just, you just betting on yourself to lose a certain amount of weight in six months. And if you do it, you can win money. So they'll tell you how much money you can win. So I've lost a bunch of weight partnering with Healthy Wage. I've been doing more keto mm -hmm. than anything. I'm telling you, peeing on that stick, that stick boy, trying to get into ketosis. It's very difficult, but you can do it. Any problem that you, if you commit, that's, it's that's the commitment. The, it's the commitment. You, you inspire me, I have to say. You, you really inspire me because you have really been committed. And it's sometimes it's not so much what you say, it's what you do. Mm -hmm. And just watching you, Kim, even I know you don't like exercising. You're the laziest exerciser I know. But even still, you've gotten out there and you've done your exercises. Yes. And so just watching you has made me say, I want to do something too. Because it's hard being friends with somebody and y'all both fat together oh, and you yeah. happy and fat. And yeah. I say that because we're two yeah. big girls. Um, and then they get to losing all of this weight and putting on clothes and you sitting here trying to be happy for them, feeling Real big because I so Sherry inspired me. We were doing the Tom Jordan morning show and she stopped sugar. And I was like, I sugar, right? I, I'm uh I'm gonna um I'm gonna uh stop sugar. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Sherry passed me the next day. She was like, I'm 30 days off sugar, I'm 60 days off sugar, and all of a sudden the weight just started dropping just because she stopped sugar. I couldn't believe yeah. it. Then her clothes started falling off her. So I was like, Oh but I was God. coming in every day with tight stuff on. Oh my gosh! Remember that I was wearing? I was just looking. I was all depressed. I was, there, I was wearing the tightest. Welcome tight to the top out. water water show. Because like, you were big. Was, you was huge. <laughs> really? Why you ain't say nothing? Why did you what? say, "Hey Kim, you're getting bigger," or Kim, you should, you know, maybe you should stop eating all of that. Kim, I'm not going to tell you to get bigger because you knew you were getting bigger. Please do. I didn't know I was getting yes, bigger. You did. No, I didn't. You, you would eat all know. of that food. When we would go to the restaurants, you was eating all. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> that didn't mean I knew I wear stretch clothes, so I didn't know I was getting You bigger. knew you was big. I you couldn't even, not. like, Kim couldn't even breathe. She would try to tie her shoes and she couldn't breathe. Don't listen to and him. And then she would get mad at me because I was losing all the weight and not eating sugar. And I would come in in these, I mean, I would come in in tight, tight clothes and short shorts. And Kim would be, and, his, and you would be hating on me. All the time. Tom, I talked to Tom Joyner the other day. When the last time you talked to Tom? Um, we were both on the Tom ago. Joyner morning show. I talked to Valentine's him. Day is coming up. And, Tom and he Jordan wants us to come out. It's our Valentine's. He's our Valentine's Day. Every year. If our you Valentine's guys know us from the Tom Joyner morning show, CC and Tata mm -hmm. uh, on Black Moms Matter. Oh, so, that's forgot about Black yes, Moms Matter. Black Moms Matter, I know. And so Tom Joyner is just. Uh, he's our guy. He's our boo. He calls us his boo. And so I talked to Tom Joyner two days ago. I sat in the bathroom and talked to Tom. I sat on my tub and Tom says that he wants to go somewhere for Valentine's Day. I said, well, who are you taking? He said, my booze. Oh, That's what he said. He said he's taking his booze 
And so he want, he said, but really no European country is going to take us because, you right. know, Tom will get on the plane right. and, and go. Well, and maybe we should go to an island. Like That's what I said. I yeah, said, but everybody's Jamaica in Mexico. Or... But I don't know if Jamaica's going to take us. But, but St. Martin, those places will take us. So I was with Steve Harvey down to St. Martin now. Well, that's what we got to do. And I said to Tom, he said, hold the date open for Valentine's Day. And Tom says, um, he said, now, you know how I do. I'm going to ask you. I'm not gonna give you a lot of time if you, you, you know, that's how Tom does. He'll say, he took him to the Bruno Mars concert. Mm -hmm. They were like front row. He took me to Janet Jackson. But when he says, let's go, whoo, that means you gotta be ready to fly. Go, it's then You gotta be ready to go meet him. Did he fly privately or you flew? Uh, which time? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, how many times were you on his plane? <laughs> I was on Tom's plane. Uh, once. No, twice. Remember, we were doing the game, the championship game. Oh, that's right. He took you to the championship game. And then we had to fly back to do the radio. Remember, he's like, gotta go to work. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I was on Tom's private plane once. It was fun. It was okay. fun. So, this fun. is how Tom is. When he says, let's go, let's go to Morocco, let's go to yes. Africa, let's go to, you know, Sh Seychelles, Seychelles Island. Seychelles Island. Let's go to Dubai. Yep. He, he, you can't say, well, let me just finish my laundry. Tom Joyner is like, you got to drop everything, come get on this plane, and, and he goes. And that's even the thing, even though we're we're not dating Tom Joyner. No. But it's so interesting to be with a man with money, a rich oh man. Oh, my gosh. You got to follow their rules. It's a trip. And we make our own money, but we ain't got that kind of money. And we like. This is what I found out about hanging out with a rich man. Yes. Rich men <gasps> are <gasps> more I'm like sorry. the controlling. Yes. And so we, Tom, and they want what they want. They, when they want, want what it. they want when they want it. They don't when you got hear, a rich man, you got kids. They don't, they don't want to hear nothing other than yes and amen. <laughs> That's it. And so we had gone to. Um, it was not the first time. You can see a clip. A uh, Chris has posted a clip of Kim and I talking about when Tom Joyner took us unlimited shopping at the. So Louis funny. Louis Mm -hmm. Great, great, great bet of you two on stage is so funny. Yes, we talked about Tom took us and, and gave Louis Vuitton his credit card and allowed us to shop to our heart's content. So if you want to see that it story, ridiculous. it's hysterical, ridiculous, really funny. But Tom flew Kim and I to Miami, where oh, he lives. Yeah. He's got a couple mansions out there. So he flew us out <laughs> there. But can you believe a couple mansions? A couple mansions. Um, on the beach. On the beach. And so he he flew us out there. For Valentine's Day, because he calls us his booze. And he has his own private beach. Now, Tommy Hilfiger lives here and all mm -hmm. these rich people. He's got his own private beach, and he had somebody do a sand, sculpt, sand sculpture that said, I love you, uh, Kim Sherry, yeah, something right. like that. It, it, yep. it was beautiful. And Big heart in the sand. It was standing up. It was a sculpture. Sand. We got to do this on stage. This is so funny. So he he went, we went with him to deliver like candy and chocolates to a homeless woman shelter. Right, and we went to that school. And we awesome. went to a school where he delivered uh, candy to the kids and stuff. Yeah. So then he took us shopping to the Christian Louboutin store. Yes, yeah, so we went to Christian Louboutin. We went to the Christian Louboutin store, and he told us, we thought we was going to get unlimited shopping. This is what happened when you get greedy. He said, pick out one thing. We was like, one? Pick out one thing? What? He was like, I flew y'all down here. I've been feeding y'all all day. <laughs> exactly. So he sat, instead of going to a bar, and letting us just go crazy. He sat and waited for us. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what can we get? So Kim's picking out the most beautiful shoes, but Kim's feet are big. So they didn't have a lot of the sh <laughs> No, go ahead, finish telling the story so I can tell what really was. <laughs> no, go ahead, that's right. That's not so crazy. So every pair of shoes. Hey, well, there's no, 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 no. Can we, <laughs> I had no problem with that. Kim, could we share shoes, you think? I'm asking. We could be. It could, it could be our thing. My feet ain't that big. Chris. It's you not like tall. it's like wearing a man's shirt. Wearing your man's shirt, <laughs> <laughs> put on his shoe. <laughs> well, you and Chris kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like you know. I feel so kind of wet. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Nobody will get. Nobody that. know unless you know the whiz. So anyway, Kim is picking out the most beautiful shoes. And she would say to the clerk, <laughs> she would say to the clerk, do you have these shoes? 
in this size and she would give her a size and they would go mm, oh no <laughs> they didn't even go in the back and check <laughs> see i can share your pain that happens too yeah, if you get, it's not the same as a woman you get the clunky you're, you're 12 you're looking for the cool shoes and then they walk you back to these old man looking things like well we got these <laughs> oh so Kim, like the shoe, every shoe she picked out was so beautiful. It was Christian Louboutin. They're expensive. And they kept saying to her, we don't have those in, the, in that size. So, But they had them in my size. So every shoe she picked out, I was like, well, can I see them in this size? And then they would bring them to me. And Tom would sit and he'd be like, oh, I'm, a, I'm a 10 and she's a? I'm a nine. You got some big feet to be so short. Because they got to carry that's all like these. Duck. They got to carry these bazookas. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's exactly what it Did is. Did you say you a nine? Yeah, nine, nine and a half. That don't even make that don't even look right. How your be you don't be a six. I wish I was. Oh my gosh, I wish I was. That's why I have these corns on my feet now because I was always so self conscious of how big my feet were that I would wear a size seven. I would force myself oh, into a size no. seven. So oh. Consequently, this fit it rubbed on this and it rubbed on this, and I have these corns. You know, you can get rid of them. How? I got some stuff. No, I'm not using none of your stuff. It's I, probably got aspartame. No. <laughs> I got rid of my say. niece's corns. No, I'm, her and I haven't seen your niece in 10 her. years. No, they're beautiful. Because she, she looked like she was walking on her knuckles. She looked like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like she was walking on her feet. knuckles. Yes, oh, walking gosh. on her knuckles. Okay, remember all this because we got to do some things. Oh. I'm going to finish the story because it's so funny. So, Kim, Chris, like you, they took you to the old men's section because they didn't have the shoes in your size, the real hip ones. So Kim was like, <laughs> we got shoes. these with the strap. <laughs> you got the, okay. you got the Velcro. No. Yeah. Speaking of, Chris, I'm, no, I'm saying Chris, that's what happened to me. You, not you. you share her pain because she was like, what shoes? Because they kept saying, well, we can order them from like Europe. <laughs> no. And so, you know, well, what shoes do you have in my size? They proceeded to bring out like platform wedges, like right, right, right. like oh, shoes you wear to a picnic, like your old I auntie's barbecue. It, it mm. was, and so this is what I told Kim. I said, Kim, a purse. I said, no, no. I said, Kim, go get the most expensive pair of boots, shoes, and then just return them. And you don't, you, you get just get the money. Oh, and no. she was like, time well, Tom gonna listen to your strategy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tom is gonna love it. Tom is gonna love it. Tom, this is all Sherry's thoughts, not mine. So he was like, what? So it was like a pair of boots, and I and I wish I had the picture or the video yeah. to send to send mm -hmm. Chris. But there were a pair of boots that were just like uh, they. You had, can take a picture and send it to him. You get home. Okay, so Chris, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna get a picture to so send to you. So we'll, you mark, see the we'll mark the time and down. Spikes all over the boots, and these were the most expensive boots that they had in their store. I mean, amazing. Because I picked them first. And she picked them first, but they had them in my size. So I said, Kim, just get those boots, take them to the Christian Louboutin store in Beverly Hills, and return them, get the money, and then you could get something that you want mm -hmm. and let them take a, a long time to send them. Because Tom was like, if you don't walk out with shoes today, you don't get no shoes. Yeah, he ain't playing. He's not playing. So back she to the, tried back to, to his rules. Foot, yeah. One of his boots, and she was like, you ever seen somebody try to put a size 10 and a size 5 It was boots? like Cinderella. It was like Cinderella. Like, you're not the one that the friend's supposed to marry. And so she couldn't do it. So she ended up getting, and I just, because Tom was like, they don't fit you. So he <laughs> the, the old lady sandals. No, it was the platforms. The platforms. But, and I got okay, those boots. boots. I got those boots. Let's get, Not to the moral, let's, let's get to the moral of the story. Not <laughs> comfortable. Not comfortable, not nothing. But so, y'all gonna see who wins at the end. Go on. <laughs> go on to so, tell them. I was planning on, because they were expensive, I was going to take them back to the Beverly Hills store and get maybe two cute pairs. See, because, a strategy. Because Tom was sitting there, so I couldn't finagle and hustle like I normally do. So I was like, well, let me just get the most expensive pair, then I'll take them back and get what I want. So we get to Tom. That's what she thought. That's what I thought. We get back to Tom's mansion, talking about rich men want what they want when they want to win it. Yeah. Tom was taking us by private, his private boat to the an arena, to the arena in Miami to, to see Andrea Bocelli. Chile. We were sitting so close to Andrea Bocelli mm -hmm. that we could see all of the fillings yes. in his teeth. Yes. So I put on a beautiful sundress 
and I put on some cute wedges that I had. And Tom said, where are the shoes I bought? And mm. I said, they're in my suitcase. And he goes, put them on. And I mm. said, I'm not putting them on, Tom, because sure they're going to hurt my feet. Now, you know, Christian Louboutin, they have red bottoms. You can't wear those things everywhere. I said, Tom, it's salt water. It's going to tear up my red bottoms. And he goes, I want you to put the shoes on that I mm. bought you. And mm -hmm. I said, I'm not putting them on because they're not comfortable. And he said, because when I was trying on the shoes and I was like, and he said, well, Sherry, those look too small. Yep. And I said, Tom, pretty is painful. That's, That's what, what she I said. said. I That's said, what she said. <laughs> So when he said, I want you to put those boots on that I bought, I oh, said, I'm not doing it. He And I said, Tom, they're going to hurt my feet. I bought some very comfortable shoes. And he said, I want you to put those boots on because you said pretty is painful. Now put them on. And he walked away. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yep. At that moment, <laughs> I said, Tim, I'm leaving this blippity blip house. You don't tell me what to do. You don't. And my neck was moving just like this. And I said, I'll get these boots myself. It's going to take me 12 years to get them, but I'll get them myself. <laughs> don't no man tell me what to do. And Kim goes, fix your face. <laughs> fix your face. She said, fix your face. Take some Tylenol and put those boots on. Oh I was so mad. what I finished saying is you ain't going to mess this up for me. <laughs> Put you don't understand this mansion that we were staying in. We each had our own bedroom. You could hear the sea, the, the the waves of the ocean. Is it, it down on ocean? Like, is it near we those places? We are packing. Yeah, in. yeah. So if I had to go home, Tom was gonna send her home. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and and like he took us riding in his Ferrari. He took us to ride. He had a Bentley. Like Tom was just rich. So he took us out to eat and 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 showed us off. So I put the boots on. So hurting my feet. Oh, she was in pain. I was in so much pain. Wait, you went too fast. I told her fix her face. Go put. Are we froze? No. Oh, I told her fix her face. Put your boots on and let's go. I said, but I'm gonna put these platforms on <laughs> and I'm gonna be comfortable. I said, you lean on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Them big old flat high they served you well. They sure did. You was hipping and hopping and crying. I, I was, was like limping. And I was just a mm. clopping along. And then we had to get on the boat. So we're on the boat and all the spray from the water is getting on me. And Kim was just so comfortable. She was crossing her legs, standing up on the daggone boat. My feet were killing me. And then I kept going, oh, this salt water. Then we had to climb out the we boat. We had to climb because once they docked us, we had to climb out of the boat. And we had to walk across the street yeah. to the arena. And then, you know, when you get into an arena, you got to go to all those concourses. We had to go downstairs because we're yes. in the VIP section. Downstairs, we had to wait. We, and then, then you got to walk all the way down. We, the okay, park. that's when I hated that we could see the fillings in Andrea Bocelli's mouth. Because you knew because how we had, we had to go to walk. all the way to the front. Yes. We had to walk all the way oh, to the front, amazing. and that was so uncomfortable and painful to walk all the way to the front. I was limping like crazy. Kim Matter, just so comfortable in her platform wedges from Christian Louboutin. But trip this, even after we finished watching Andrea Bocelli, we ended up going to a restaurant after that. So I had to stay. We and, yeah, remember we went out with the Argentinian girl and the Cuban girl. Oh right, right, we right. We went to right, right, Tom right. went home. He dropped us we off, home, and right. we went to the restaurant. Oh, I yeah, stayed. Well, in, I love that restaurant. I stayed in that in those hills from probably six o'clock till three or four in the morning. Yeah. My feet was like boom, 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 big boom, 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 big boom, boom, boom. But that Tylenol helped, didn't it? I took Tylenol, but it still hurts. Pretty. What so, but this painful. painful is pretty, but this is what we realized. T rich men yeah. want what they want when they especially want it. Especially if they're paying for it. Especially if they're paying for it. They want what they want when, when they, they want it. Because Chris could have told you where those shoes And I'd have been like, when you give me my bill for free. Right. Chris we will make this podcast free. I, well, put I wish shoes Chris on. would tell me. I wish Chris would tell me to put on some damn shoes. I'd be like, you put on these shoes. Matter of fact, you shoes. put on these heels. <laughs> Matter of fact, catch the shoe when I throw it at your head. <laughs> but you don't say that with a rich man. So I'm just saying the moral <laughs> of the story is if you don't want a rich man telling you what to do, 
get your own stuff and make your own money. It's a lot of morals in this story. It's a also, lot of morals in that don't story. be trying to be uh, the hustler and turn the mm-hmm. shoe back in. Yeah. Now you gotta wear the shoe. Now you gotta when wear the shoe. When you were talking so, about my big cloppity clop. <laughs> <laughs> so I was not able to turn the shoe in because we had worn the shoes in the salt yep. water with the, the red, boat. The red coming Wa- off the, the bottom. The red was coming off the bottom. I scuffed some of the gold. I mean, it still looks amazing. I have it in my closet. So as soon as you come in my closet, that's the first thing you see are those shoes, and they're they're, they're like wow. I'm surprised but, uh, you didn't let them let them go in that uh, big yard sale you had, where you were giving away all kinds no, of great stuff. I would never sell those shoes because no. I'll never be able to afford them again. No. And they're a great story. It's a great conversation piece. Do you still have your shoes? I, 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 what? I can wear those to the beach. Those are <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I think I might wear. You know what? I'm on a new show. I think I might wear them on my new show. On uh, on E-Pop Daily. Uh, right. Uh, a pop uh, daily on Daily e. Pop. A uh, daily pop on E. It's every day. Everybody you want to see me. It's called Daily Pop. It's live. In the morning, here from Los Angeles, it's on the E Channel. And so proud good. of you, Kim. That's great. You guys are so busy. It's awesome. It's, it's great to see. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we say. Hallelujah. Thank we you, say Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We're so thankful and so um, feel so very blessed mm-hmm. that we we can work and that we can use our gift to make people laugh. Yeah. So I do dish, and Kim does um, daily pop. So we work every day. So in we the work morning. every day. We get to make people. We get up. What time you get up? I was getting up at three forty-five. Eight. You get up early to me because I get up at five about five forty-five. What in the morning? You act like you you were the one that gets up early. I didn't know. I thought you got up that early too. So I, no. now I switched it. Some mornings I can get up at four fifteen, four thirty. I was late this morning, but it's it's dark outside. You yeah, get up. When you get up. It's dark. They go live, and I have to be there. So is there any traffic? You start, uh, hi, Chris. Do you guys have traffic at all right now? No, no, not at that time. Not, and not at COVID. See, but she goes to a studio and she yes. does a uh, uh, daily pop. I work from home. So I just and go down. Which would be there. nice. I don't know why they got us in that studio. Yeah, I don't know why either. Well, everybody's COVID, being tested. And yeah, we get tested about all the time. four to six times a week. And everything. But uh, yeah, so we still, we're blessed that we get to, you know, still make people laugh and then do our mm-hmm. podcast. We got a second advertiser our podcast it's all about we because this is self-finance our podcast so we're trying to make some money we're trying to get our money back <laughs> you mean your money i ain't paid for well, at, some, at some point if we would like to be making a salary yes. you know we'd like to be <laughs> this was but this we, we still got to pay chris yeah but um i'm gonna pay chris one day <laughs> One you're just day. waiting. You're just waiting for COVID to get over so that podcast bill can go the other way. Oh, that was good. <laughs> well, I didn't know what else to rhyme. That was somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. There, the Why you just messed it up? You just made up your own thing. Because I didn't know the word. How do you not know the words of Somewhere Over the Rainbow? Because I watched The Wiz. Oh, it's the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Wizard of Oz girl. Okay, that was random. I know everybody's like, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we break out in the So is it time for black business or what should we, what do you all want to talk about now? I'm just. <laughs> wow. Golly. How about, you know how why? about this? How, what's, what's the, and seriously, you, you all have been so busy and this is interesting to me. Uh, we got a few things we can cover. Sherry and Kim both on Call Your Mother, which is scripted. It's on ABC. You can see it on Hulu, all that. What's the difference in all the performances, all the creative endeavors that you do? What's the difference going scripted to live? Because it is like I've seen plenty of people going that are great performers that come on and can't do it. They don't have that. It's a weird muscle that not everybody has. And you guys seem like you have about five or six muscles that you can flex. I do have some muscles, Chris. Mm. Um, so I would look at, look at Sherry. It's just like uh, when you say live, you mean um, so you've like, got you have daily you have daily pop. It's it's a segmented yeah. like like let's hit the topic show. Sherry's doing Dish Nation. You guys are doing the podcast. Then you're gonna run over to wherever ABC films on those two, and you're gonna have to have things memorized and then maybe you're going to do a virtual comedy show and sherry's bored with the subject we can just go on to the next <laughs> let's talk let's talk about aspartame for 30 minutes <laughs> no it's no. night time and she want, we always do the podcast in the morning but i would say the difference it is a different muscle um but 
It's performing. <laughs> it's just, uh, not that hard of a question. I was like, I'll lob this up. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That was disrespectful, Chris. Oh, it was not. I'm just having fun. I'm laughing with you guys. I was being serious. I know you were, about to see. I was about to do a whole what dissertation. Take, what take Kim, let's let's wow. let's hear it. I apologize. Let's hear it. I forgot. Now. No, I wanted oh, to tell come on. because we talked about this in like two podcasts ago. Do you remember, Chris? We talked about being funny. We kind of talked about doing a sitcom as opposed to <laughs> now Kim is yawning. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> doing this podcast now, we so tired. Um, <laughs> I got up at three in the morning. You did get up at three in the morning. I'm beat down. And, and then we were. Oh no, this is what we need to talk about. I was just over here two nights ago because Kim and I are working on a book together. Oh and God, we're working on right. a book together called Two Funny Mamas, and we're talking about relationships, that raising our wrong. children, and there was something else we were talking about. Ra- raising our children, and, relationships. And, and giving our girlfriends our ex-boyfriends. And just like girlfriends. <laughs> our girlfriends. And it's a book by Two Funny Mamas, Kim Whitley and Sherry Shepard. So we pitched it. There's interest. And uh, Kim's friend, C. Mickey Dawson, who's mm-hmm. an executive over at Google, she's also a uh, writer. Then gave book. all her information out? Is that, okay. not, I'm no, proud I'm of her. I'm, 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 so I go ahead. You're right. I, okay, maybe I shouldn't have. But she's like amazing. <laughs> but in her spare time, just, everybody's turning on each other every five seconds. I know. This is what I mean. I guess on Friday night. Um, <laughs> so Kim's a very good friend oh, helped her write Delusion of Cinderella. Mm-hmm. She's an amazing writer. She writes yes. books. So she offered to do our book proposal for us, which consists of doing sample chapters what the book is about, who the demographic is, who we're targeting, what are we trying to convey with the book in order for the buyers to sell it. That's part of our pitch. So she's put in a lot of work and she wanted Kim and I to get together, Chris, so she could ask us questions and she wanted to write off of what we riffed. Now, you know, when Kim and I get together, it's magic. Yes. Kim wants to do the freaking thing, like me on a Zoom, at her at her house, me. And I said, it's not going to work that way. She wants us together. So I come over to the house on time at seven o'clock. Kim's no good at seven o'clock. We have had a lot of rainstorms here. So it's supposed to rain. We're just about to start. Oh, that's right. <laughs> We're about to start. And you know that's her ADD. Right. That's right. Chris, you know, you've worked with us countless times. We tried to do a voiceover oh, for, for our first advertiser. It took us an hour instead of 15 minutes. So we're sitting there, we start riffing and talking. Her girlfriend is cracking up because she's typing and recording. Then Kim's neighbor calls because she hears nonstop water running. So Kim got to go on the park up, go outside all the way to the back. With the flashlight. With the flashlight. And I'm like, Kim, your your pool is not running. There's no water running. It must be somebody else. No, 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 no. I got to listen, listen. So she's standing out there like a, one of them gnomes that you put in your brain. Real <laughs> still. Oh, her friend is like, what's going on? I said, let me go out there. Listen, you hear the water running? Is that a woman? So now she wants to climb and look over the wall. Kim, it's not your water. It's the neighbors. Oh, Kim's no. like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And then she's like, oh, and I got to clean the gutters because when it rains, all the leaves going to get in my gutters. So I, we're supposed to be doing this book <laughs> proposal. We're trying to sell a book to make some money, but Kim. It's going to rain for three days. And that's what she kept saying. But it's going to rain for three days. And I got I to gotta clear the gutter. I got to clear the gutter. So then she goes, I need you to go. So she's texting the neighbor as we're trying to riff together to get this book together. And she's telling the neighbor it's not me. The neighbor's going, yes, it is you. So Kim's like, can you drive me over to the neighbor house? I ain't oh, never no. met her. I don't know who she is. But oh, I no. need to go over there. So we, I drive oh, her over there. It's she's the talking behind me. She's talking to the neighbor behind her. Then they get out the car. And all I hear is Kim, because she was like, this is my yard. And Kim's like, oh, your yard is nice. I need to do my yard like this. Ah! They're doing all of this. And I'm sitting here going, OK, I'm going to be here for an hour while they kiki and have a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm to be on the phone with this lady. Meanwhile, the lady's texting, because she's over in friggin' oh. DC. Oh, God. Three hours ahead, and she's like, "Come on, what's going on? I gotta be at Google tomorrow doing resolution crises." 
So what's happening? And I said, Kim is in there with the neighbor and I can hear them laughing. Then all of a sudden I hear Kim go, do you have a stool? So we can look over the, over the uh, wall. Oh, no. You got a stool? And I'm like, this is going to take all freaking night. Oh, God. And I'm sitting yeah. there. We done left you Joshua with strict instructions. If anything happened, That's call right. your daddy. Right, so yeah. we are yeah. in the house. Right behind the house, we said, Dude, if anything happens, call your father. Because Kim was like, because I'm going to be right over there. I don't know where over there is. So we're over here, and I'm waiting for her, and her and the neighbors just keep keying it up. Then Kim comes back, and she's like, and she's on this nation, and I'm on this late. It, it's dark. We got masks on. She don't know who we are. So, and I'm like, well, she white. Tell her everybody loves Raymond at 30 right. Rock. Well, so, you know, mm. this is what white people watch. But, I mean, <laughs> it took so long with the neighbor. Then Kim's like, they done found out it's a drain that the city hasn't taken care of, and the water's draining in the drain. We go back to the house. The lady's like, well, let me just, let's reschedule. You can't reschedule with Kim and I, because we're too busy. If you don't get us when we're supposed to be got, you don't get nothing. And so we sit, we come back to the house. Kim then takes a shovel and goes out to clean the, gu the gutter. So I'm sitting there with the woman going, I guess Kim, and then you, here's the thing, Chris, when you deal with Kim for years, you don't get upset anymore. You get real calm. You learn to just bring it down. What are you eating now? Something I found over here on the floor. Oh no. <laughs> I'm from the day of Oh my God, okay, I'm sorry. girl. You, you, learned... you offered to help me. I was going to help you, but I was like, I'm going to eat because I had ordered some chicken. So I'm just, I just sat there and I just it got really calm. Night. So we, at seven o'clock was when we were supposed to do this. I don't think we started actually talking to, uh, See, Mickey. until like 9.30, going on 10. So we did it and it was gold comedy gold when we were together but but joshua had let him a delivery person joshua oh no <laughs> joshua don't open the door for nobody so when my food came they buzzed the gate joshua opens up the gate so we get there the food's just sitting there then we tell him don't open the door and so I came and I was sitting in Kim's kitchen so when she came to down she didn't know I was there oh wait no that was the first thing let's talk about that Sherry, we planned this right, but Sherry did not give me a confirmation that we're going to do this at seven o'clock tonight. Or no. oh, the the writing session. The Brain writing session. Okay. Yeah, we got to go all the way back to the beginning. She didn't confirm anything. Me and Joshua are in the house by ourselves. <laughs> I'm upstairs getting in the shower. <laughs> Joshua's downstairs playing or doing whatever he's doing in the back room. I don't know. But all I know is I walked downstairs because... No, you. I texted you and I said, right. where are you? And you said, well, where are you? And I said, sitting in your kitchen. That's what she said, like a fucking scary... Ridiculous. I, said, I said, I know this heifer ain't in my house. So I had to come downstairs and have naked to see. I said, she ain't in the house. She trying to be funny. I thought you were setting me up. They're like, ha, 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 ha. I come downstairs. She just sitting there with her legs crossed in my kitchen, all quiet. I said... <laughs> I ran around the corner and scared me to death, but then Joshua ran around the corner and scared him to death. What did Joshua say to you? I don't remember what he remember said. Remember he ran, he was like, ah! Yeah, he, he did, screamed. he screamed. Because <laughs> I just was sitting there very calmly. Just sitting there with her legs crossed. <laughs> I said, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing in my kitchen? What are you doing? She was like, so I had text. What did I text? You said, I said, That's what Kim I is not going to be ready. And, and C. see Mickey, Mickey said, text. just come on over. Come through the front door. See, Mickey said that. I didn't say that. Well, I thought Kim said come through the front door. She don't even Her front door was open. So I just came through the front door. And See, it was just craziness. It was off the chain. But you shouldn't be. Don't do the creepy stuff. Don't just sit in somebody. That's what the, those uh, true, true Hollywood mysteries are made about. Yeah, it is. Yeah, who did it? You done it. <laughs> We finally got our chapters together for our book proposal Yes. to take out and pitch. And um, it just took so long. I don't remember why. Oh, because Kim has ADHD, which is probably that aspartame you drink. I have not been diagnosed. Mm. No, I think people, all your friends have diagnosed you. I think yeah, we all agree. None of them doctors. Yeah, but we all agree on what Chris, your diagnosis is. I focus when it's time to focus. That's I what I'm you. thinking. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. 
That she does. I use that as an excuse. For <laughs> y'all. That's her way of avoiding it. I like that. I want to go back to it. I like that. I like thinking about uh, Joshua holding court with like the Instacart guy, a mailman and like two other delivery people. You come back and he's got them like doing things around the house or like discussing what toys he should get next. Like I, I like that part of it. Well, I'll tell you, that's her son. That could have been um, it. That's Maybe absolutely nervous. her son. So that was a funny story. And uh, our black business, I don't know what this is. But, you know, it's, this is what I wanted to tell you about. What? So uh, my girlfriend, who is a dermatologist here, yeah, open it up. She sent you something, oh, too. Okay. Uh, Dr. Matt. It's called Bella Nutri. B-E-L-L-A-N-U-T-R-I. It's hair and skin, um, and it's all natural. Hair and skin, does she have serum? Uh, Yep, special uh, marine protein and collagen blend supplements developed by dermatologist Dr. Macklin, Dr. Matt. Uh, It works with it, uh, uh, what is this? For thinning and uh, hair and anti-aging of the skin. Oh, wait a minute. Now this is fantastic. What is that Right there, I think this is is mine. No, this is no, not no, yours. No, no, no. You've been fed off in the podcast. She no, this, this one is mine. I don't even know how this guy stuck It's vitamin C zero. Right, this is a, you don't touch this. That's mine. No. no okay, sorry. Okay, so Dr. Macklin, um, uh, Yangu Beauty is the specialty African nutrient. Moisturizing day cream. Yangu, goo. Y-A-N-G-U Beauty is a specialty Renew, African nutrient rich oil full line of skincare products. So, Gel to milk Basic cleanser. Basic skin care for eczema, acne prone skin. But so these are the two products. Look at Bright this. Bright ice cream. So we have two different, it's a whole bunch you of You about to get a vitamin C serum back. She only sent one. No, that's that was an accident. No, it wasn't. Take it Diet care care supplement, what that is? I'm going to send this to you, uh, Chris. It looks just like a white box. Sorry, because it's Yangu. But look at, hold up all the products. And this one is Bella Nutri. This is for the skin. This is all these products. Now can I can I take this? Like you two continually, like everybody's commenting and they're dead right. You all look great. You guys look young and everything. I think my beat ass needs some of this stuff. Like, can I can I get in on this? Like, you need some African natural yeah, products. I need yeah. something, man. This this white skin's not doing me any favors. Right, but it's hard to, it's no, white you can't. Stuff. Yeah, what that does what is when you. Vitamin C serum. So it's. Um, Listen now, it's Dr. Dr. and then Macklin, M A C L I N dot com. And Yangu is Yang, Y A N G U, beauty dot com. And this is our black business. She's let me a black see this again. Let me, let me see. That this. is not, it was an accident. No, it wasn't an accident because it was part I of put the package. It that was, was for these me. are the two products. No, well, I don't, why don't you order one and let me have that one? This is the problem. Because I need why vitamin C arguing? more than you. Yes, you, you do need vitamin okay, C. Okay, then, exactly. You just So said this it. is a gentle uh, makeup remover. Why don't we tell people what we have? We got uh, dietary supplements. This is uh, beauty. This is a dietary supplement. This is going to make your hair and nails grow right here. What is that one? Gel. This is a cleanser. So it's a cleanser. It's the makeup remover. It's the eye cream. Um, that you put on. This is eye cream. I love, let me tell you something. I love eye cream. Really? Wow. Eye cream is so important to put on because as you get older, you start getting bags around, right around here, around your eyes. You start getting dark circles under your eyes. Mm -hmm. And um, this skin right here is very sensitive. So like when you put cream on, you should use this finger right here. But um, Eye cream is really good for tightening up those bags that you get under your eyes as we get older. And when you don't get enough sleep, you get bags under your eyes. So eye cream is really, you do it like that. You put that eye cream on there and around, and up a little bit around because you start getting crow's feet. Oh, okay. So I'm it's trying like, to get them. Yeah, and that's, yeah, she, crow's feet is one thing. It's good because it's laughter. It's when you laugh. But mm-hmm. it also, is in, it's aging. So um, I love eye cream. And then we have um, we have a this moisturizer. I can't wait to start using this. I'm gonna let you know. Oh yeah, I love please. skincare. So this is a it's a facial cream. And this is it's from so- the African root. Those are Yangu is the African. Oh, the no. African root. And yeah. I don't know what that serum is, but I want it before I leave here. Uh, taking care of your skin is so important because a lot of people ask, 
about Kim and I, our skin. Number one, water. People always yes. say to me, what do you do? Why does your skin look good? Uh, water, because water just hydrates your skin. Yes. It, it, you know, drink half your body weight in water. It does make a difference. Drink a, if you can drink 16 ounces right when you wake up, 16 ounces before you go to bed, you know, do it throughout the day. Yes, you're going to be going to the bathroom, but it's flushing out toxins. And I know when I started drinking water, I've drank nothing but water since 2012, um, right? Really? When I was a that's all I've drank is water. I don't really drink anything else, maybe tea with no sugar, but it's always been water. It immediately cleared up. Like I said, I used to have dark circles under my eyes. That went away. Um, my skin. Dark circles, yeah. My skin used to be really porous right here, like big uh, open pores, what? closed up. Um, from the, drinking water? From drinking water. The one thing I will say about my skin, it's very soft. My skin is so yummy soft because water, because it's hydrated. When you drink a lot of water, your skin is just hydrated, so it gets soft. Soft. So that Mine has, is dusty, uh, like a dusty. Stop it. Dusty. It so is not. Stop oh it. Because I drink aspartame. <laughs> You need to trail off a little as you say aspartame, like like it's affecting you mid. -summer. Oh right, right. Because I drink aspartame. <laughs> Perfect. Because your brain and ride it. Right. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. It is so important to hydrate your skin. It is so important to use things like you know get the makeup off your skin. Yes. Hydrate it. Put the cream on there. Put the serum. Is that vitamin C serum for your skin, or is it to ingest? It's orally your skin see you put and when you put serum on your skin the way you put it on you put like four drops on rub it together and you press it into your skin that's how you hydrate your skin you press like you rub moisturizer but you press serum into your skin you press it on your decolletage your neck just press Decolet it in. how you spell graphics G R A P H I C S. that's why I, was, I kept spelling giraffe <laughs> So this is our black business. Oh, what is wrong with you? Everybody. This is our, everybody tired. This is our black business. This is our black business say, that we're promoting. Come here. You know, normally we'd be say out of town or go. I would say, Kim, let's go to the movies. Oh. Like we would go to a, like, a, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Hair's looking oh, good, okay. Joshua. Don't huh? move. Hair's looking you. good, Joshua. You the hair. It? His hair. You like his hair? It looks great. That's so cute. Two funny mamas. Oh, look at that. Uh, look at me, Joshua. So beautiful. Oh, I had to take I love that you. He's my big boy. Mm -hmm. ah. It looked like he didn't been hyped up on some sugar. That's what that looked like. Did, oh, did you eat one of those cookies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's what well, I... Well, no. Okay. Was that too hard? He ate a small okay. piece of it. I ate a small piece of it. Okay, it's, it's almost bedtime. Right you know, you have school tomorrow. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't have school. It's Friday. Hey, hey. I was like, is he, is he a bad kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go to Saturday detention. I'll be all up now watching TV. No, no TV. You know why. Look how tired Kim is. No, no, no TV. I'm on sound. <laughs> no, no TV. Up, <gasps> Cicely Tyson! Oh, and Cloris Leachman. And Cloris Leachman. And Larry King. And Larry King. Oh, my God. What a week. Andre, oh, that Andre has said, up. who's the third? It was yep. Larry King passed away. Cloris, Cloris Leachman, Leachman passed away. And, and then Cicely, Cicely Tyson. Tyson. Did you know either any, any of them? I knew Cicely Tyson. All right, let's start back with this. Cicely Tyson. Cicely Tyson. Tell me about her. I didn't know her well, but right. I got to spend the inauguration of Barack Obama with Cicely Tyson. You did? And I said, but I just remembered it today talking to Roland Martin. I was like, I was with Cicely Tyson. So I have to pull those pictures up and post them. You do. I be so tired. I don't feel like posting I pictures of when I was with a celebrity because I got to go through 95,000 yes. pictures. Uh, yes. So I never posted any pictures. But so you actually were with Cicely Tyson and she did like a character. 
of like uh, she spoke. Oh, uh, for, the, for the inauguration. Yes. Did you did you get well, to talk to her at the inauguration? Well, at that inauguration, we sat. Uh, we were all together. Oh wow! This was. Uh, did she give any advice? I was afraid of Cicely Tice. I didn't talk to her. I know a lot of people were intimidated yeah. by her because she was she was like one of those like women. She was like, like a floating god. Yeah, like that. So we all were just... I, I, when you did the Tyler Perry thing, when he had the opening to his studio... I can't believe it. Yes. Was, I was Cicely right there Tyson there? Cicely Tyson. Cicely Tyson. Yeah. Because I think... You know, this he, is a... He, 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 he named a... Uh, a studio, studio after, after her. her. Like uh, a, uh, one uh, of the big sound stages. Sound stages. Can I tell you a story about Tyler Perry that Cicely Tyson said? She said, Tyler Perry... When he found out how much she made for Sounder, which was not much, 15000 or 20000 or something like that, whenever he would hire Cicely Tyson, he would double and triple her salary. What? He would do that for her. He would do that for Cicely. And Cicely Tyson became his child, Tyler Perry's child, godmother. Wow. Yes. She said they would do handstands together. And she, and she said Tyler Perry. She could do a handstand? That's what she said. Wow. She said Tyler Perry always would double or triple her fee for everything that he put her in. He would take care of her. Yes. That's how we're supposed to do our elders. What, yes. We are supposed to take care of them like that. And I would hope that when we got older, that age up in our 80s and 90s, and God, please let us still be working, that the younger crowd will come in and take care of us. That's true. You know? Wow. And all those kids that well, want to sleep with it. you. They figure will come through. Well, we got to get some better credits together because <laughs> they're not going to prostitute sugar from next Friday. Uh, yes, they will. <laughs> All them men that fell in love with you, yes, they will. We got to take care of sugar. They yes, they, they will. They might be like, let me see them. All them, all them men that keep wanting to say, all these, you get more comments from men when we want to see sugar again. They really do. You know what you should do for your 30 pound weight loss? You should do a nude photo shoot. I mean, we're going to get back to Sicily, but I'm just saying you should think about it. You should really think about doing like a taste. For Andre does erotic. Uh, 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 he does erotic photo. Andre has been lonely through this whole pandemic. <laughs> I'll be damned if I get naked in front of him. You know, his mama listens to the podcast. She yes. Don't, she don't even know how freaky your son is. Sure. You know, Andre does erotic. I don't know if you knew that, Chris. Andre I, does erotic. Andre, I talked to Andre. We we talk. We're buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, you know, his photography Andre, you could have cottage cheese thighs, saggy boobs down your ankles. Andre makes you look amazing. Yes, he does. But so you should really think about some your weight want, celebrating your weight loss. I want to just a little bit more. Sherry. But Andre will make you look so good. Do like you want to just... Yeah. Huh? No, I was going to say, I could just upload a few that have been sent to me and we could just put it on her, Sherry. Do you want to do that? Did do you, you want me to contribute? Upload a few. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, oh, was See, I not supposed to? Andre. I was supposed he to be quiet Andre. about that. No, you, I, 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 this is the thing about Andre. If you ask him to shoot, like he'll take a picture of you leaning against the wall with your butt showing. Then all of a sudden, you're going to feel a kiss on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the process. Okay, exactly. right. See how I digress? met, I know we, we are so tired. Uh, I met Cicely Tyson in New York because I had seen her in a Broadway show with Bound, uh, Bountiful, with Trip Vanessa, Bountiful, yeah. with, yes. Vanessa, and she was with, uh, Williams. Uh, she was also with uh, Felicia Rashad's daughter. I forget her name. Uh, um, Felicia Rashad has a daughter. Fel yes. She's a Broadway actress. Felicia Rashad. Fel Felicia Rashad. Debbie Allen. It's Felicia. I think it's Felicia. I don't think it's Felicia. I've never I think heard it is of Felicia. I don't think she has a fish in her name. <laughs> I don't think. I think you sleepy. Do me a favor, Chris. Look up Felicia. Felicia. Hold on. Hold on. No, Alexa. Ca Candida. Alexa. <laughs> Candeliza. Right. Do you want it no. or do you want Alexa? Do you want Alexa or? Felicia Rashad. Alexa, who is Felicia Rashad's daughter? Felicia Rashad's daughter is Candola Rashad. First of all, she didn't say Felicia Rashad. You said Felicia. Who is Felicia Rashad? And Alexa answered back, Felicia Rashad's daughter. Alexa. Okay, sisters. How, how do you start. pronounce Felicia Rashad? Is it Felicia Rashad? I pronounce that Felicia Rashad, but I'm always working on how I say things, and I might not have it right. No, Heffa, you got it right. She ain't got it right. 
So Condoleezza Rice. No, Condola. Is Felicia Condola. Felicia Ahmad, remember Ahmad Rashad. Yeah. Ahmad's daughter is oh. Condola. And Condola is oh. a Broadway so actress. So is her stepdaughter? Bonus no. child? No, it's they had a baby together. They had a baby together. Oh, wow! Well, and it's know Condola that. Rashad. I did not know that. Condola is a Broadway actress, and she was also on Trip Bountiful with Cicely Tyson. Wow! And uh, so I went to see Cicely, and she was so wonderful. She was nominated for an Emmy for that. And I saw her walking down the street on 74th and Broadway. And I was so scared to say something to her. And I said, but this, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to see Cicely. Did you just burp? Oh, uh, it. Tom, it's Tom. Oh, we're going to have to scratch this whole podcast. I tried no, to. No, no. Chris is awful. No. She passing gas, burping. No, mm. no. Nighttime I podcast. Just, no, I just tried to be like. We're going back to morning. We're going to film in the morning. Let me finish this. Please, I'm going to be done. Here, what? Oh, like, my God. <laughs> While you regroup, Condola Rashad in uh, the Showtime show Billions as well. That's a very popular oh, show. Oh, Billions. Yeah, she's an yeah. actress in that. She's on Broadway. She's oh, on I TV. have got to see her. You got to see her. So anyway, mm-hmm. which is this so And you're moving your wig around. You are out of yeah, control. Yeah, because I, I don't have a lot of body. But people. they don't need to see this, Sherry I Shepard. I know, but it, it, the, it's, it wasn't working. She it's, was thirst trapping earlier. Now she wants to pull the hair down and no, it's it just, it's face. not The body pin is not holding it's, it. It's fine. It's fine. We're almost finished. You could have held it. So anyway. Now I, you're going to sit there with a big lump on the side <laughs> of your head. Stop. Not. Okay, so I anyway. want to apologize to our listeners. It is way Wait, out of control. Hold on, hold on. Let me turn around. This is Lee Tyson's story. <laughs> so she's on seventy. She's on seventy fourth and Broadway. And she's pushing one of those shopping carts, like not the kind that the homeless uh, people have, but the you know the square ones that you buy at Target. Oh, that you pull your stuff. That you pull with. your stuff in. Yeah. And so she looked like she was about her business, and I said, Miss Cicely, my name is Sherry Shepard, and she was like, What? And I said, my name is Sherry Shepard. I'm a co-host on The View. And she said, okay. And I said, Miss Cicely, (laughs) can you just give me some advice about acting? And she said, what do you want me to tell you that you don't already know? That's yeah, that's how people talk to you. (laughs) Everyone talks to you because you ask some dumb ass questions. (laughs) And I'm glad she talked to you like that. I was so scared of her. And I was like, well, you know, um, I'm I did Broadway, I did Cinderella, um, Rodgers and Hammerstein's uh, Cinderella on Broadway. And she went, what? And I was like, so intimidated by her. And um, I said, well, I, I see you are are busy. And she said, I am. And I was like, wow. oh, my God. oh my God, I'm so intimidated. Oh my God. But I was like, it's so nice to meet you, Miss Cicely. And and she went on and, it was, and that was my interaction was that she scared me so bad. But she was like so amazing. She, her power yes, that exuded yes. from her. So yeah, my favorite, give you your favorite Sissy Tyson performance. I'm gonna give you mine. I can't. I can't. Not, no, I can't. I'm not good. You're not good. Mm-mm. Let me tell so you. You give me mine. If you have never ever ever seen. The autobiography of Jane Pittman. Oh, Jane Pittman. She played like nine to 13 characters, didn't she? She, she played. <laughs> oh my God, Chris! Don't ever accept an invitation to do the podcast. <laughs> this is the last. I will not be there. I'm not coming anymore. <laughs> I don't she, need any character. Oh my God. I think I just need a myself. I'm sorry. What's wrong, oh, God? No. Gonna dog you. They are. She can't, she's not Saturday Night Live. <laughs> it is the honor. She she's not Eddie Murphy. Oh, so she <laughs> played. She just played she, Jane Pittman. Oh my God. Chris. No, I mean she played it when she was younger. But let's she. Oh my God. So you're right, but you got it wrong. Oh. What she did was play Jane Pittman from a very young age, right. all the way till she was a oh. hundred. No, like she was on her way out. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. That ain't characters. nine characters. <laughs> so mm. that's one person aging. Just be quiet. <laughs> Just be quiet. Oh gosh. And if you Jesus. My favorite scene, this one I said I want to be an actress. When Cicely Tyson went up to that water fountain where you can drink for whites only. Right. And, and she spit in it. And but she because you couldn't drink it. She took, that scene took five minutes. 
or 10. Like she she went up to that water fountain and she was like, I'm going to drink this water because they said you can't. And ain't nobody going to stop no 100-year-old black woman. And she dared them. She walked up and that was Jane Pittman. And she walked in and she got to that water when I tea. This is what I knew. That's like a Viola Davis move. She was right. like this. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, this was the water. And so she literally was taking her time. You got to tell the listeners, she just moved her lips and she was just trying to get up to that water. That's right. And it still was moving towards the water. She was, mm, I'm going to get to that water. And then when she got to the water, she tasted that water and it was like so good. And then she stood tall and turned around. I said, who the hell is this lady? And I want to do what she's doing. She is one bad mamma jamma. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Cicely Tyson. Then when she uh, married that Miles Davis. I oh, do you know her and Miles Davis married each other in their 50s? So you got hope? Uh -huh. Is that what you're doing? You got hope? Stop you it. In the podcast. Yeah, because it's, yeah. Oh, <laughs> do you know? You understand, I Chris, I can't take it. She's so into herself <laughs> with this hair on. I am, because when I don't have it on, I don't even care. You sure don't. <laughs> so her and Miles Davis. Okay, so this is how she met Miles Davis. Miles Davis is the uh, iconic jazz musician. He's a legend. You know who Miles Davis is, right, Chris? Where do you think he's from? I'm like, what's wrong with her? Oh, is he from... Uh, did, uh, People Buck know who Miles Davis is. Chris Buck Reed. Shane Lewis. My favorite thing is whenever Sherry names all the other cities besides St. Right. Louis. She always says Detroit. Lewis. Yeah, Alt, he was born in Alton, Illinois, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is how... It's right I by here. All right, then. Do you know how she met Miles Davis? She was visiting her friend, Diane Carroll, who's another diva, or was another diva, rest in peace, Diane Carroll, uh, in her apartment. Diane Carroll was neighbors with Miles Davis. And Miles Davis came over to Diane Carroll's. He was married to a, another woman who was like a dancer. And he came over in his robe to Diane Carroll's apartment to borrow some sugar. That's what they all do. So. <laughs> Cicely opened the door and she said there was this immediate connection. She says she saw his spiritual innards. That's what she said. Now, you know, you oh. innards. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. She did. She said she saw his innards and they had this connection, but she didn't get with him until he his divorce became final because mm -hmm. she was with him when he got the uh, uh, final papers for his divorce and they got together and they always connected they were married for seven years wow she found out in the sixth year that he was cheating on her oh. he was a serial cheater and she found out and she says that the miles davis that everybody knows in books oh. and through his music people don't know the real miles davis that he was very a creative soul he was very sensitive and vulnerable and that was a part of him that he tried to protect from the public so she said nobody knows the Miles Davis that she knew. But she said they got into this epic fight because, you know, you used to have long hair for a hot second. Yeah. That was a weave. And she says that they, in her autobiography, that they got into a fight because she found out, she found a, a note from one of the women he was sleeping with and they were supposed to get together on a rendezvous. The woman left all the information. So he was trying to go and Cicely wouldn't let him leave. So he tried to move her out the way. She snatched a big portion of his hair and she wouldn't let go. <laughs> so she kept pulling. She said the next thing she know, the whole weed came out in her hand and she mm. threw it on the ground and she stomped out of the apartment, but she heard him on the phone to his friend talking about, she pulled my whole weave out. You know how much money I spent on that weed? Because they were expensive back then. They were expensive back then. And she said she didn't know whether to be horrified or laugh. So the autobiography, uh, I may not have read Jane Pittman, the autobiography of Jane Pittman, but I read the autobiography of Cicely Tyson, and it's so great. Oh, and she sued Elizabeth Taylor. That's what got a black ball for a minute. What? She sued Elizabeth Taylor. Did you know that, Chris? I didn't oh, know that. Elizabeth Taylor, because she was doing a Broadway show. She had never missed a performance. It was done. It was produced by Elizabeth Taylor's production company, and they were doing a Miles Davis tribute. And she asked for one night off to go to the Miles Davis tribute. And the director said no. And you know what Cicely did? She took that night off and she went to that tribute. Good for her. Elizabeth Taylor's production company fired her. And she sued wow. them in court to get wow. the rest of her unpaid earnings. And she said a lot of people in the industry stopped hiring her 
because she dared to sue somebody of Elizabeth Taylor's stature. Good for her. And she sued and she got the money. She never talked to Elizabeth Taylor until one day, maybe about 10, 15 years later, she saw James Earl Jones at dinner. He was with Elizabeth Taylor. So her and James Earl Jones did a little kissy kiss and Elizabeth Taylor was sitting there and Elizabeth Taylor said to James Earl Jones, you know, um, she sued me. How much did you get? And Cicely Tyson says, she said so loud in the restaurant, over $500,000. She got that much money? She got that much money. Well, then I know she wasn't getting that for no Broadway play. She unpaid must have earnings. unpaid and uh, some other things. I don't know what it was, Lawyers, but that's what she well, said. For her. her autobiography is very interesting. Her and Miles Davis stayed together. They, they got married again and he was cheating on her. They got divorced, but she was with him until he died. Oh, because she yeah. just they stayed friends, so they were always in love. Because so he died of AIDS, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did. For ice, can you, Chris, uh, Alexa? Die what did Miles Davis die from? Miles Davis died on September 28, 1991, at the age of 65, due to pneumonia, respiratory failure, stroke. From complications. Okay, for HIV. I don't know. I thought okay, so because I, of drug use or something. I think it was more think, from drug use. But, but isn't that you, how you, you can You know, it could I, don't know. I, don't I don't know. I don't want to put that out there. You, you already did. Well, I think it is true. I remember because I was a fan. Chris said he lived with him, so he should know oh, that. Oh, oh God. <laughs> uh, so all I can oh. picture is Christmas Tyson in heaven, reunited with, with oh, Miles Davis. Oh, nice. Laura Leachman was a really funny lady. Yes. I loved her. I worked with her on a show called Wedding Bells. That was a David Kelly show. She had a body sense of humor. She could tell the dirtiest jokes. She'd make everybody laugh. She was so much fun to be around. And Larry Sanders, did you ever do Larry Sanders show? I mean, Larry King? Larry Sanders, one of the all-time great TV shows. He's one of the all-time great. But Larry King, I did a show one time. Larry King was famous because, Kim, he never did research on mm -hmm. any of his guests. He preferred to be surprised uh, by whatever revelations they came out with. So I remember telling him on The View, I thought he was just being lazy. He had a good laugh at that. So he'd always wear his fenders, be hunched over, and he had, oh, oh my gosh, meatloaf. He had amazing guests on his show. So to all three, rest in peace. Damn. I don't know if this is true, but that was deep right here. What? I don't know if this is true. What? David, 62. What the age did they say he died at? Who? 65. Miles. 65. Okay. Learned he had HIV in the late 80s and then watched a partner die. Oh, uh, no. He said, I uh, partied harder, took every drug in the world. Maybe this ain't him. So let's scratch that. Uh, okay. Uh, do you think maybe you might want to do a little research before you. I do? am researching. I'm trying to read it with the people. Somebody looking it up for me right now. Yeah, because I think we're going to get correct. I don't see oh, anything. Wow. I don't see anything besides pneumonia. Okay. I think you need to do a retraction until you find said out. It's rumored. It said rumored. Mm -hmm. Miles Davis was rumored to be HIV positive, which he denied. He had been a heroin user for many years. You know, people put this drugs. Is, okay, sorry. This is, I mean, that's in the New York Times. Yeah, Miles was taking so you medication have to, for you HIV have to... at the time of death. That could explain the chronic pneumonia that led to his death. I'm just saying. This is all uh, uh, allegedly, everybody. Allegedly. Yes, allegedly. Allegedly. Okay, there we go. That's the word. Because everybody was thinking about Cicely Tyson. Everybody was worried. And then she was like, I'm fine. Right. Right. Exactly. So I just think that she's up there in heaven with Miles Davis. Like, like they were soul connected. You ever been connected by soul to anybody? Yeah. Like, your soul connection was Gerald LaVert. So, and everybody wants to know, when are we going to talk about Kim and Gerald LaVert? We're going to do it on the Valentine's Day show. I don't like talking show. about Gerald LaVert. I know, but we're going to do it on the Valentine's Day I don't Valentine's. want to. Yeah, yeah, I don't are. want to talk about no. Gerald. No, we're I'm not do... over it yet. Okay, well then I'll ask you very gentle questions. <laughs> gentle. But we're going to do it for the Valentine's Day show. Kim is going to talk about her, the love story with her and Gerald LaVert. Casanova. Oh. Casanova. Mm. You don't know no songs, do you? Any song. This Casanova. was a very weird podcast. Why I don't much more. And it doesn't matter if he died with HIV. It's not like that. Okay, why are you back on this subject? Because I want to make sure people aren't did you just wrong. Burn? I did burn. Oh, my God. Jeez. 
I'm nobody's sorry. got nobody's getting it wrong but you. Yeah, I apologize because I I was talking out loud because we're very free on this podcast, but I wanted people to it doesn't matter what he died of, he died. Well then you're the one that brought, it, brought it in to like I don't understand. Like you're not when somebody passes away, you're not supposed to bring up the negative stuff. Oh, I didn't you're think that was to, negative. I don't know. It is negative. HIV? Yes, it's That's negative. That's not negative. Yes, it is. No. No, it is. It's not negative. It's a disease. It's like COVID. We talk you about don't, it. You don't think COVID is negative? No, you don't it's think a disease. disease. It, a disease talking. is negative. Because you're tired. I am. So I think you know what? It's been an hour. I want to get off the podcast. I love y'all. Thank you for listening to us. What about our merchandise? And let's talk about the merchandise. I have to use the bathroom. Just okay. Like, so if you want to, I would to- say this is probably our worst podcast. <laughs> no, it's ever. Good. Oh, no, it was horrible. No, it wasn't. We I, had really good stories. I didn't like you. You were all into yourself. No, I'm and not. Your, your thirst trapping. No, I'm not. I talked you about my and Didn't mean to. And it's. <laughs> It's you going to have to tell Chris to take all of that out. Yes. Well, that'll cut off 20 minutes. <laughs> We're good. If you want to get any of our merchandise from Two Funny Mamas, sweatsh- um, coffee mugs, tote bags, T-shirts, masks, uh, hats, go to... go to. Um, oh, my God. Buy Jack backslash Two Funny Mamas. What is wrong with you? I'm very tired. It's late. I went to the movies. We can't go to a movie that's That's what I meant, because we, we can go get something to eat. They opened up the restaurant. We're not leaving the house. But they opened up the restaurant so we can sit outside. So, like, we could actually go You're somewhere. You're trying to go to the IHOP and get pancakes. No, I, I don't do it. pancakes anymore. No more pancakes. We used to go to IHOP all the time after the comedy clubs, and I would eat a full stack dripping with butter, strawberry syrup with maple syrup. Yes. But we don't do that anymore. So we have to go, we need to like go to a vegan restaurant. Okay, anyway, so buyjack.com slash two funny mamas. Please subscribe to our podcast. Um, After this one, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Tell all your friends and family to subscribe. Thank you for hanging in there with us. And we're um, going to get next podcast. I got Sherry's book we're going to give away, and I got my book. So we're okay, cool. We're going to call this podcast from now on No Structure. <laughs> yeah, this one was cool. So thank you. So- no, it wasn't. It was really good. Just Happy hang, hang with us. Hang with us. We're hang not with us. Film this it, time it, I'm night. telling you, it'll we're gonna get, get up no. at 4 o'clock in the morning. So no, no, we're going to do it on Friday. This is good. So anyway, everybody, take a little time to enjoy Two Funny Mamas. Take a little time to enjoy the view. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You're not on the view. I'm so oh my tired. gosh, she almost said take a little time I sure did. to enjoy. <laughs> to enjoy the view. I sure this... did. I don't know what Chris, happened. cut it off. It's over. Oh my gosh. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.